Today, I'm going to beat Pokemon Emerald with only an Aggron. Spoilers for the last two videos, Minectric and Medicham are going to be in this video, so if you're concerned about that, please check them out first. Also, rules for this playthrough are in the description, so check those out if you're wondering why I'm making a certain decision. Now, let's talk about Aggron as a Pokemon. It has extremely good base stats. 70 HP, 110 attack, 180 defense, 60 special attack and special defense, and 50 speed. While it is quite slow, remember that in solo challenges, the player Pokemon gets access to EVs, boosting their speed just slightly, and then also a badge boost, which increases their speed by 10%. Plus, for the majority of the late game, I will be overleveled. As a result, I think speed is not going to be that huge of an issue for Aggron. Its attack stat is so incredible, I don't think it's going to be using a lot of special moves, so I decided to give it an adamant nature to boost its attack stat and lower its special attack. Its ability is Rockhead, which prevents recoil damage from moves like Takedown and Double Edge. Unfortunately, though, it learns Double Edge all the way at level 63. But that being said, it does have a decent moveset. It starts with Tackle, Harden, Mud Slap, and Headbutt. Headbutt is a fantastic starting move, by the way. Through level up at only level 13, it gets Metal Claw, very convenient for Roxanne. Then it gets Iron Defense at level 17. This move is really good against Steven in the late game, by the way. It also gets access to Iron Tail for same type attack bonus damage. Then through TM and HM, it is sort of the ride-on of Generation 3 because it learns pretty much everything, at least all the good moves. Dragon Claw, Water Pulse, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Hyper Beam, Solar Beam, Iron Tail, Thunderbolt, Thunder, Earthquake, Return, Dig, Brick Break, Shockwave, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Rock Tomb, Aerial Ace, Secret Power, Surf for some reason, Strength, and Rock Smash. With an adamant nature, I'm going to want to stay away from the special moves here, but using just the physical moves should be enough. Access to Earthquake, Brick Break, Return, and Iron Tail seems like it's going to be enough. Also, since Aggron does not get any rock type moves through level up, despite being a steel rock type, by the way, that always throws me off. I think this thing is going to take no damage from electric type moves just because of its aesthetic, but it does in fact take neutral damage from electric type moves. To give it access to a same type attack bonus move fairly early on into the playthrough that isn't Rock Tomb, if you haven't watched my Fossils videos, yeah, Rock Tomb is not very good. It is really frustrating with only 80% accuracy. In order to prevent myself from having to use this move extensively, today I've given Aggron Hidden Power Rock. Technically, the first major battle in the run is up against the rival, and for today's playthrough, of course, he is going to have Mudkip. This is the Pokemon that Aggron is weakest to, just because Ground-type moves do 4 times damage to it, and while Combusken also has 4 times damage, I do get Ground and Rock-type moves, so I figured that it would be a little bit easier to face. In the early game, I want to train up to level 13 so that I can gain access to Metal Claw for super effective damage against Roxanne's Pokemon. With the slow growth rate, this isn't the fastest process as you would expect. I've had all the trainers north of Rustboro City, after that, I am still not quite level 13, so I face some Pokemon in the wild, which does give me the lucky opportunity to catch an Abra, which is going to help navigating around the map later on using Teleport. After that, I finish my training off, learning Metal Claw, and now let's take on the first Gym Leader. Up first is Geodude, I go for Metal Claw, taking it to red health. It tries Rock Tomb, but just misses. She uses a potion, and I finish it off. That's a good start, let's move on to the next Pokemon. This one takes more damage from Metal Claw, likely because I got a better damage roll. It does have the same HP and defense stat as the previous one, so that's the only explanation. Now, it's time for Roxanne's Ace. I go for Metal Claw, which does a lot of damage, more than I was expecting. Nose Pass goes for Rock Tomb, which does pathetic damage, of course, to Aggron, because the Steel-type resists Rock-type damage. And then because of some healing, this fight takes a little bit longer to finish, but eventually, Aggron emerges victorious and earns itself the Stone. Badge. This is a 10% boost to my attack stat, and it is also the TM for Rock Tomb. As I've mentioned before, this is not a very good move, but I will teach it right now in the place of Harden. Now, setup moves that boost your defense stat are actually quite good in Generation 3 because they help a lot against Steven Stone. That being said, Harden's just not going to be useful, and I've also noticed that taking those moves throughout the entire playthrough is not really a good strategy. With Metacham yesterday, I held off on teaching Bulk Up way too long. In the end, it didn't really affect the results because Metacham is such a beast, but with Aggron, I really don't want to make the same mistake. I fight the rival in Rustboro City. This fight's still really easy. Again, I'm a third stage Pokemon. I'm in the early portions of the game, and I have a move like Headbutt, so nothing is really going to be difficult. That is, unless Aggron has a double weakness, and unfortunately for it, it has two, both fighting and ground-type moves, and it also has a single weakness to water-type moves. 
All in all, I don't really find the Steel Rock type to be that good defensively, which is very ironic. By itself, the Steel type is the best defensive typing in the entire game, and in Generation 1, the Rock type was essentially supposed to function that way as well. Turns out when you put two really defensive things together, they just completely fall apart against fighting ground and water moves. Therefore, in the post-Roxanne early game, things are really stacked up against Agron. While I can make the choice in Dewford Town to just completely skip Brawly, I will eventually run into one of the types that I am doubly weak to, and that is against the rival after Slateport City. I have been training on most of the trainers, by the way. Agron is level 21 for this battle. I two-shot the Lombre. Next, he sends in his Marsh Tomp, which of course has Mud Shot. My Headbutt does cause a flinch, conveniently. I get another one in, taking it down to red health. Marsh Tomp hits with Mud Shot, lowering Agron's speed, which means Brendan's Pokemon moves first and finishes me on the next turn. By the way, I did forget to get some HM users in this playthrough. Little mistake, I have to go back and pick them up. After that, I do some training because I can cut a bunch of trees out of the way to find more trainers, and this brings Agron up to level 23 where I try the rival again. Now Headbutt one-shots the Lombre, so I take no damage here. I go for it against the Marsh Tomp, doing more than half. I survive a Mud Shot with green health. It moves first, choosing Water Gun, which doesn't do enough damage, and as a result, I knock it out. All that's left is Slugma. It is no problem. So, Agron has defeated the rival. I've gained access to Mauville City and all of the experience that is surrounding it. During this training, Agron levels up to level 29, and here it can learn Iron Tail, which I put in the place of Metal Claw. This has twice the effective power, but it does have 20% less accuracy. Overall, Steel-type moves are not very good offensively, especially prior to the introduction of the Fairy-type in Generation 6. I don't think I'm going to be using Iron Tail that much, but when I do, I want it to hit really hard. After all the trainers have been defeated in Watson's gym, Agron is level 30, which is honestly not very high. This fight is usually quite difficult, so let's see how it goes. I'm not expecting much. Up first is Voltorb, which goes for Spark and paralyzes Agron using my Cherry Berry in the very first turn. Alright, that's frustrating, but luckily Headbutt gets the one hit. Next is Electric, I use Headbutt. By the way, it has a one-third chance of activating Static, which happens here. So now I am paralyzed against the Magneton. Luckily for me, I have four times damage against it, so I can use Mud Slap to bring it under half health and lower its accuracy. However, it doesn't really care about that because it can just use Shockwave still, taking Agron under half before I finish it off. I'm lucky there that my damage range didn't take it to lower health because then Watson would have healed it and prolonged that fight. Next is Manectric. It also doesn't care about accuracy drops. I do bring it down to orange health after two hits, but Watson heals it and I get my second reset. I think that fight came down largely to the luck that I got against the Electric and the Voltorb. I had no resilience to paralysis, and as a result, by the time I made it to the final Pokemon, I had just taken too much damage from moving second. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, speed is not really that much of an issue for Agron. It is slow, it moves second against the Voltorb and the Manectrike, but it is faster than the Electric and the Magneton. This time without using my Cherry Berry, I'm able to knock out the Magneton without a status condition and proceed to Watson's Ace. Alright, please let this be it. Because I have green health, I can use a move other than Mud Slap and Headbutt is going to be doing more damage. In this case, more than half, which triggers a Citrus Berry. Manectric just goes for Howl, likely because it sees that it has bad damage ranges with my Agron being at a high level. Howl is really not going to help it, by the way, because then it would have to attack me with Quick Attack, and yeah, Quick Attack is going to do like nothing to Agron. Watson gets stuck in a little bit of a healing loop, which is frustrating because it causes Static to activate, but it's not enough, and in the end, Agron is able to pull through and defeat him on its second attempt. With the Dynamo Badge, I now get a 10% boost to my speed stat, making it even less of a problem throughout the rest of the run, and I also get the TM for Shockwave, which I'm really hoping that I am not going to need to use. On the next route, I decide to teach Secret Power over Headbutt. I think this is the better normal type move, just because when you're on regular terrain, it does have a 30% chance to paralyze. This both cuts the target's speed as well as their chance to move, and it is a persistent state unlike the flinches that Headbutt causes. Plus, those require my Agron to be moving first, so they're not applicable against very fast Pokémon. Maxi at the top of Mount Chimney is another fight where there's a potential major problem for Agron. Well, it has secret power for the Mightyena, but then it runs out of PP, which is very unfortunate because once I take his lead down, he sends in Camerupt next, and it knows Magnitude. I'm gonna have to knock it out with either Rock Tomb or Dig. In this case, Rock 2 misses, 
Camera up hits with magnitude 9, and yeah, Agron just goes down. Even 180 base defense will not save you from 4 times damage, apparently. All of that being said, I have seen this camera up go for some silly moves in the past, like, for example, using Ember on the first turn instead of magnitude when it would be super effective. As a result, I decide to use Dig, and I go underground, and then magnitude hits me. By the way, magnitude 10. The fact that I am underground means it does double damage, and yeah, of course Agron goes down. Down. Instead of continuing to grind away here, I use Teleport to head back to Fall Arbor Town. I circle this little house with the path that I didn't know existed for a really long time and pick up three sets of Person Berries. Then I use Teleport to head back to Fall Arbor Town, where I can use the Move Reminder to teach Agron Iron Defense in the place of Iron Tail. I spent a bunch of time telling you how I didn't want to use these setup moves in the run, and apparently this is going to need to be my solution. I thought that I could set up Iron Defense against the Mighty Enna so that Magnitude does less damage, but Maxi's AI knows when you are setting up a specific stat, and so it prioritizes using Roar to switch you out to prevent this setup. By the way, it only does that when you go above plus three, so if I use one iron defense and knock the Mighty Anna out, then I can make it to the camera up with a better defense stat. If I am setting up on the Mighty Anna, I am going to be hit by at least one sand attack, so I thought the use of secret power was my best choice. After all, Rock Tomb has really bad accuracy once you're at minus two. While I am able to hit the camera up and do more than half, it hits magnitude 10, and then follows it with magnitude 9, finishing Agron again. My position in the next battle is even worse. Minus 3 accuracy. That gives me a 50% chance to hit with secret power. By the way, you will note that I have taught Shockwave in the place of Rock Tomb. This is so I can hit both the Mighty Anna and then later on the Zubat without missing. But of course, I have to use secret power or dig against the Camerupt, and secret power refuses to hit. Camerupt rolls magnitude 10. What? It is not supposed to be getting this many. Alright, I'll try it again. There is one more update I can make to my strategy. Once I knock the Mighty Anna out, instead of missing on my first turn against the Camerupt, I can set up Iron Defense here, because it has no move that can force the switch. By doing this, I will have plus four and more opportunities to roll Secret Power to deal damage to the Camerupt, but I'm just not getting enough. The Camerupt goes down to red health, but once again it finishes me. Alright, this is getting really old. By the way, in the next battle it burns me. Apparently there is even more that can go wrong in this fight. You might be wondering why it went for Ember there, and the reason is that the AI rolls damage ranges to see which one is going to do the most damage. So in my former playthroughs where it uses Ember instead of Magnitude, it's likely that it rolled low damage with Magnitude, say Magnitude 4 or 5, and then Ember rolled better damage. After all, it can't predict that I'm going to use Dig, so when it sees me above ground, it is rolling Magnitude without the modifier. In this case, when it rolls its test ranges, it sees them against my Steel Rock typing and knows that Magnitude is the better choice. Unless I have set up significantly with Iron Defense, in which case the special move Ember is far superior in terms of damage. So that is why sometimes it will choose to use this move, other times it will still go for Magnitude. This is just because the test roll was a better version of Magnitude, say Magnitude 8, 9, or 10. One potential solution to this fight would be to do more damage with a move like Return, but with Agron, since it's been leveling up slowly, during this fight, Return only has base 72 power, so it's just a little bit better than Secret Power. Eventually, the camera hits another Magnitude 10, but in this fight, I get the luck that I need. I hit Secret Power, not once, not twice, but three times with the third one being a crit, and for the first time, I have moved on to Maxi Zubat. Okay, Shockwave, please one-shot this thing because I only have 14 hit points left. I really do not want to lose because of Supersonic, and luckily for me, Shockwave does it, so Maxi is defeated. With him out of the way, I grab myself the Meteorite and head south to face Flannery. The Rock-type resists the Fire-type, cancelling out Steel's weakness to it, so she's only going to deal neutral damage with her most powerful moves. Also, because I went for an Adamant nature, my special defense isn't lower, and that's helpful here. I set up Iron Defense on the first turn, then use Secret Power to knock out her first two Pokémon, and I can use Dig safely against the Camerupt because it knows no Ground-type moves. In this case, it just has Overheat, Tackle, Sunny Day, and Attract. I finish it in a single super effective hit. Next is Torkoal, which I can also use Dig against. My Dig does half, it sets up Sunny Day. I use another one, taking it to a sliver of health, which means she does use a Hyper Potion. I go for Secret Power here because I know she's going to heal and I would like to get Paralysis if possible. Two more digs later, I have defeated her, so now let's continue with the Gym Leaders. I am now backtracking to face Brawly. Yes everyone, I am facing Brawly. His fighting types technically have super effective damage against me, but by this time I have taught Agron Return. 
turn. And yeah, I am really over leveled. Level 35 against his level 16 and 19 Pokemon. So I just one shot all of them and earned myself the Knuckle Badge. We are going to continue this rapid fire gym leader segment by facing Norman next. This fight, I am pretty disappointed in myself. Agron has everything it needs to defeat his slacking. In the first fight, I use Return and get hit by Counter, which does massive damage. I can't finish the slacking off, and so it finishes me with chip damage from Faint Attack. Now I make no claims on my channel that I am a fantastic player. I misclick on Return one more time, taking massive damage from the slacking. I try to use Dig so that I'm only hitting every turn that it's loafing around. Once I brought it to about half health, I was like, ah, I should be able to knock it out with Return, and nope, Return is not dealing anywhere near enough damage, so once again, Agron goes down. In the next fight, I do what I should have been doing all along, alternating between Shockwave, which is a special move, and Return, which is a physical move. The special move cannot be countered, and as a result, I'm able to knock the slacking out and sweep through Norman's two remaining Pokemon with ease. With this fight finished, I now get the Hidden Power TM from the Slateport City TM shop, and I'm going to teach this right away to Agron in the place of Shockwave. To counter Sydney's Pokemon that love evasion strategies, I do gain access to Aerial Ace later in the playthrough, and I think that that's going to be the better move anyways, since it is physical. Hidden Power Rock destroys the rival, even when I use it against the Marsh Tomp, it is doing decent damage. After that, I head into Winona's Gym. Here, I'm going to let the footage play so you can see how I solve all these puzzles. I believe this is the minimum number of moves required to get through these puzzles, please let me know in the comments if it isn't so that I can improve my play just a little bit more here. With the puzzles defeated, now let's take on the flying type specialist. This one should be easy, I'm pretty sure Hidden Power is going to sweep her whole team with the exception of the Skarmory. I knock out the Swablu as well as the Altaria, move on to the Pelipper. I figured going for Iron Defense here would just be a free boost, and then I could knock it out, but no, of course, it does not use Protect the turn that I go for Setup, it uses Supersonic instead. Luckily for me, I have given Agron a Person Berry just to counter this. Hidden Power Rock knocks it out, she sends in Skarmory next. I do a lot of damage on turn 1, get hit by Sand Attack, which luckily does not prevent my move from hitting on the next turn. Last is Tropius, and I am also able to one-shot it, earning myself the 6th badge and the TM for Aerial Ace. The next section of the game is largely uneventful for Agron. This leads me to the rematch against Maxi. Time to get my revenge, I am hoping, in this fight. Using the Person Berry, I'm able to get plus one attack by the time I knock out the Mighty Anna, and this time my accuracy isn't lowered. In this case I make a mistake, I choose Iron Defense because that's how I played last time against the Camerupt, but this time it has Earthquake, so I should really just go for Hidden Power right away. As a result, I take a lot of damage, and I do get one loss here. In the next fight though, I just go for Hidden Power right away, the camera up actually drops the ball, setting up Amnesia, and I knock it out for free. Following that, I one-hit the Crobat, and Maxi is defeated. In the Team Aqua hideout, I fight Matt, he isn't a problem, and then I explore Shell Cave to pick up the Shell Bell. With it, I head into the Moss Deep City Gym, and I'm going to make one update to Agron's moveset before I face Tate and Liza, and that is to teach Agron rest in the place of Dig. After all, this double battle can sometimes take quite a while to get through, and with two Pokemon attacking you each turn, recovery is of course very strong. They lead with Zatu and Claydol. This is problematic for Agron because the Claydol knows Earthquake, which of course is four times damage. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to one-shot, so using Iron Defense, I'm hoping that I'll be able to heal using the Chesto Berry at some point, and then knock the Claydol out. Earthquake hits doing about a third, and then with Return, which is my best damage against the Claydol, I do less than half. I prioritize knocking the Zatu out so it doesn't get too set up, but the Claydol is still just chipping away, and plus, the more time I give it, the more likely it is to get a critical hit. I tried to set up with Iron Defense more to hopefully be able to rest and then strike back, but in this case, the Claydol with the Soul Rock are able to knock Agron out. That first fight really didn't go well, so I'm going to train on the surrounding routes just to gain some levels before I go back and try again. By the way, this guy just to the left of Pacific Log Town has 5 Gyarados and 1 Magikarp. He's actually pretty good experience. I kind of like to think of him as the 6 Magikarp trainer from both Pokemon Yellow as well as Pokemon Crystal. Maybe he took a vacation to Hoenn, leveled up all his Pokemon, and got 5 evolutions. I complete my training at level 50, and then I head back to take on Tate and Liza again. This time I was approaching the fight with a different strategy, which is just to set up Iron Defense as much as is possible, and then sweep once that's done, using Rest whenever is needed. The problem is, if the Claydol crits, I am going to lose. And it crits in this battle. Then I make a misplay not using Rest, so Agron goes down. The Claydol crits again, and then in the next fight I do manage to take it out, and move on to the Lunatone, which is really great. 
However, I use my Chesto Berry to heal up, and on the exact same turn, right as I wake up, the Lunatone goes for Hypnosis, putting Aggron to sleep, and as a result, I have another loss. We're just gonna move on here. I did try a few more times, but still, Aggron is not able to do it. I head to the department store, which is something I very rarely do. I don't want to waste time fighting the rival, but in this playthrough I'm going to. This allows me to buy a bunch of vitamins to improve Agron's stats. We could have a whole long debate about EVs at this point in the game, but overall I think that it is the wrong choice in a solo playthrough to try and target and do specific EV training, especially if this means you are going to have to fight wild Pokemon. You level up so much slower, and I just don't think it's worth it. After that I level up one more time with trainer Pokemon up to level 52, and then I attempt Tate and Liza again. There are still some resets in here, Agron is just not very consistent, but eventually I figure out what I need to do. I set up Iron Defense four times, this time I ensure that I knock the Lunatone out before I use my Chesto Berry, and that leaves only the Soul Rock, which is pretty easy to take out despite the fact that it is using Flamethrower, so finally I have earned myself the seventh badge. With this one out of the way, Agron is going to get a major upgrade. I can finish this small rock puzzle, head into this chamber, and grab myself the TM for Earthquake. For Agron, I'm going to teach this in the place of Return right now. I know it does not get the same type attack bonus, so it has slightly less power. However, I think its typing is just much better. After that, at the end of the plotline, I have to go up against Archie. Theoretically, Mightyena is weak to water types and he has a Sharpedo, but it doesn't actually know any water type moves. It has Screech, Slash, Taunt, and Swagger. Yeah, not a very good set for the enemy team's leader's last Pokemon. Because of that, I take an easy victory. Rayquaza comes in to save the day, and with that, I'm ready to face Juan. Love Disc is first. I don't have a Person Berry, but I'm just going to try to go for the sweep here. I'm not setting up Iron Defense since most of his Pokemon attack with special moves. That is, with the exception of the Whiskash that does no Earthquake. However, for some reason, he just doesn't want to send it out. I knock out the Love Disc, Celio, Crawdont, and Kingdra before it finally comes in. Then, on its first turn in battle, it sets up Amnesia, which I'm really not sure about. This gives me time to hit it with Earthquake. He tries to heal, but it doesn't matter, and I defeat him. Okay, that was some really strange choices from the AI. Either way, I have won, so let's take on Wally and Victory Road. Of course, this fight is very easy. Agron has no resets here, and with him out of the way, I am now ready to take on the Elite Four. As I mentioned before, against Sydney, Aerial Ace makes the most sense. I'm also using the White Herb here to counter Intimidate. Then I use Earthquake to damage the Mighty Anna. It lowers my accuracy with Sand Attack, so now it's time to use Aerial Ace. I finish it off. Next is Crawdont. Aerial Ace is not doing very much to it, so I finish it with an Earthquake that luckily hits. From there, things get easier. He has two Grass-type Pokemon, which takes super effective damage from Aerial Ace. And the Shift Tree specifically loves to set up Double Team, which is obviously doing nothing. It does attack, and it uses Extra Sensory, which does a comical amount of damage. By the way, this is his only direct damage dealing move. I move on to the Absol, which is not a threat, so Agron has made it to Phoebe. You might think that a move like Iron Defense is going to be completely useless against her, but number one, it can be used when the first Dusclops uses Protect so that I don't have the effects of pressure come into play. Also, the second Dusclops does no Earthquake, so I want to set this up to take as little damage from it as I can. After that, I use Earthquake to knock the Dusclops out. I do get confused, which is annoying, and it uses Protect, burning a bunch of PP, but in the end, it doesn't matter. The second Dusclops comes out next. I go for Earthquake, doing about half again, which is good, but then then it eats a citrus berry. As a result, I need two more earthquakes to finish it off, so it gets in decent damage, but it only amounts to be about one third. Next, she sends in her bayonet that knows Thunderbolt. I am just barely not able to knock this thing out using Aerial Ace. She heals at once, and it does more damage with Thunderbolt before I knock it out. And then on the next one, I use my Chesto Berry, and it burns me with Will-O-Wisp. Okay, that's not great when you are a physically attacking Pokemon. By the way, my stat did not update in the bottom left, because in Generation 3, burns do not affect your stats. Instead, they affect the damage dealt by physical moves. If you notice in the center of the screen, I have accounted for this by adjusting the effective power of both Aerial Ace and Earthquake. I take my time against this Bayonet, knocking it out slowly, and move on to her final Pokemon, Sableye. 
I'm in a bad state here because knocking out the former Pokemon really drained my PP. As a result, Aggron is going to be getting very hard with Iron Defense. By the way, its defense stat is 999, and that is actually not true. In Generation 3, your stats actually can go above this number. They're not hard capped there, like for example in Generation 1. However, I didn't have the programming skills to make space for myself to have another character down there, so I just decided that it was going to be 999 if one of my stats ever got that high. This takes a very long time, but eventually I run out of all my PP, I can use Struggle, and I knock out the Sableye. For Glacia, I reach each Hidden Power Rock. It is super effective against all of her Pokemon. The only one that's strong enough to survive it is the Wall Rain. It lives on high red health. It retaliates with Surf, which does a massive amount of damage to Aggron, but it's not enough for the knockout. So in this case, I have rewritten history because the Titanic has dodged the iceberg, and now I'm moving on to Drake. This fight is one of the first instances where speed could really be a major problem. With the exception of the Shell gone, I am slower than all of Drake's Pokemon. Yes, even the Altaria, which only has 107 speed, but Agron only has 106. And that is if it doesn't get hit by a Rock Tomb. Okay, now it has 70, so it's much worse. Still faster than the Shell gone, though, I will have you know. I went for Iron Defense there just because it loves to use Protect. I finish it off. Next, Drake sends in Kingdra, which goes for Dragon Dance, conveniently for me, allowing to use Hidden Power, get a critical hit, and knock it out. And that is good news, but that is also where it stops, because Flygon is next, and I can't do very much damage to it. It looks like it's going to be a 4 hit if I'm using Hidden Power Rock. As a result, it can hit Earthquake way too many times, so this is a reset, let's try again. This time I tried to set up with Iron Defense, but then Kingdra comes out, and because I've taken damage, it sees that it has a KO range with Surf. It goes for the offensive play right away, and that's it. Instead of continuing to try this at level 58, I am going to use 5 rare candies to go up to level 63, and this gives me an advantage because I can learn Double Edge in the place of Hidden Power Rock. It's really easy to relearn Hidden Power whenever you want, by the way, and in Generation 3, unlike in Generation 1, Double Edge is more powerful, it now has a base power of 120. So this is going to hit harder than neutral Hidden Power Rock. Also, Rockhead is very helpful in combination with this move, so I'm not taking any recoil damage. This time I move on to the Kingdra with full health. I'm able to knock it out without taking any damage because it tries to set up. And then we get to see how Double Edge is going to do against the Flygon. In this case, it does more than half, so I have made it to his Salamence. The best choice here, of course, is just to continue attacking with Double Edge despite the Intimidate. That being said, the Salamence gets all the luck it needs and burns Aggron with Flamethrower, allowing it to get the knockout on the next turn. Alright, fine, Drake, we will try this again. This time I'm not just going to learn Double Edge, I'm also going to use all my rare candies to take Aggron up to level 70. In addition, I am going to give Aggron the Shell Bell so that I can recover health whenever I deal damage. This lets me just barely survive the Flygon on red health, 5 hit points to be exact. Problem is, the Salamence is faster and I can't use healing items, so that's it again. If I can't do this at level 70, then Aggron just really does need more levels. So in this case, I am not using my rare candies. At this point, I'm going to let all my HM users faint, black out, and go and do more training. I level Aggron to level 61. Then I come back to the League, crushing through the first three members, making it back to Drake. At this point in the playthrough, I want all of you to look at the timer. It's around 2 hours and 25 minutes. I was quite tired and forgot to use my rare candies twice facing him. As a result, I have two more resets. However, once it is level 74, things work out much better. I planned this out specifically so its speed would be 134, which means I can move first against every single member of Drake's team. By doing this, even if I get to low orange health by the time the Salamence comes out, I can use Rest with the Chesto Berry to heal up, and then strike back with Double Edge in this case. I have to land it many times due to a healing item, but I'm still able to take his ace out and move on to the final Pokemon Altaria. Double Edge does more than half, it can't really do anything to Aggron. So, at long last, Aggron has made it to the champion. To this point, things have been pretty rough. I start things off playing well using Double Edge so that the Waylord cannot hit a max power Water Spout. I also don't really need to set up here, so just knocking it out as fast as possible is the best choice. Next, Wallace sends in Gyarados, which causes Intimidate to hit. I am able to take it out, and the following Tentacruel, 
But then Ludicolo comes in and does a surprising amount of damage. This thing is so happy, it clearly takes a lot of joy in just frustrating the player, because normally it's setting up double team. But today that isn't the case. It gets a critical hit in my next battle, by the way, knocking Agron out again. Every single time I seem to make it to the Ludicolo, I have less than half health, and there isn't really an opportunity to heal without getting hit for more damage. The Gyarados has Earthquake, so I can't heal there. And then the Tentacruel can use things like Hydro Pump, so that doesn't seem like like a good idea either. Even with a critical hit, I am not going to be knocking the Ludicolo out, and its surfs just do enough damage, even when it doesn't crit, so Agron goes down again. And again. And again. So what's the solution here? Um, the solution is getting a critical hit against the Gyarados so that it never uses Earthquake. Then against the Tentacruel, I can get a one-shot and move on to the Ludicolo with full health. Because my health is so high, the AI chooses Leech Seed to set up, and I can knock it out with two uses of Double Edge, moving on to the Milotic for the first time. Admittedly, with some perfectly timed luck on my side. So the question is, how much damage will Agron deal to Milotic with Double Edge? And the answer is half. I heal a little bit with the Shell Bell, survive its Surf, it heals with Leech Seed, Agron has only 16 hit points left. I go for Double Edge, good thing I have Rocket, and Agron knocks the Milotic out. So Wallace only has one more Pokemon, it is Whiskash. I was 100% sure that I would not get the one hit here with either Double Edge or Earthquake. This strange fish with a W on its head is pretty bulky. I tried to use Rest, but Surf is just doing way too much damage. I think, once again, it is time to black out. I didn't see another option for Agron at this point. When I went into this playthrough, I really wanted to play as concisely as possible. I have received criticism in the past that I don't just go for all physical moves or all special moves when the Pokemon is better with that stat. In this case, I think the opposite criticism is fair. In this context, Agron really should be using its special attacks, and my nature should be updated to either a naughty nature or a rash nature. Still, with an adamant nature at this level, I think that moves like Ice Beam, as well as Thunderbolt, will have some place. I also just wanted to have every everything with me when I went into the league, so I even pick up the TM for Sunny Day, despite the fact that I am never going to use it in this playthrough. Against Drake, you can now see Ice Beam in use, and of course this is much better than using Double Edge. With it, I'm able to easily sweep through his team and make it back to Wallace. For this fight, I'm going to continue using special moves, so I'm going to put Thunderbolt in the place of Ice Beam. The reason this move is so critical here is the Electric-type move gives me a way to one-shot the Gyarados, despite Intimidate and Prevent Earthquake. With that being consistent, I can can always make it to the Ludicolo and knock it out with two uses of Double Edge. In this case though, it went for Surf instead of setting up Leech Seed, so I'm not in a great position when the Milotic comes out. It has so much special defense, so using Double Edge here for the two hit is the better choice. That exposes me to damage from Surf, so Agron is left with 15 hit points. I might not do this even with the special moves when I'm one-shotting the Gyarados. Things are not going well for Agron. I did not expect this play through to take three hours when I started it. Apparently the game heard my pain, gave me a critical hit against the Whiskash, and I knock it out in one hit, surprisingly winning Wallace when I really had no right to. Maybe this luck here counters out all of my misplays earlier on in the run, but somehow I don't think that that's the case. Agron finishes the league with a time of 2 hours 45 minutes and 26 seconds, with 37 resets at level 78. This is a game time of 8 hours and 51 minutes. But as I always say, the game is not over, there's still Steven Stone left to face. To prepare for him, I'm going to go to the move reminder so that I can get Iron Defense back. In addition, I also relearn Hidden Power, and now I am ready for the ultimate test. This fight starts off so well for Agron, and that is a refreshing thing to hear. Because of the Skarmory's moveset, it can essentially do nothing to me, allowing Agron to set up with Iron Defense, and then knock the Flying type out. Next, Steven sends in Armaldo. It doesn't take that much damage from Earthquake, by the way, this is the wrong move to use against it. Hidden Power does a lot more, and as a result, I finish it off. Next, Steven sends in Claydol, and I really don't have a good move against this thing. It has Levitate, so Earthquake can't do anything, and Hidden Power does chip damage because the Claydol resists it. That is all made more complicated by the fact that Steven has full restores and he really likes to heal when his Pokemon's at low health. This is depleting Hidden Power Rock very quickly, but then the Claydol gets a critical hit, so all of that doesn't matter anyways. I tried again, and this time conveniently I am able to knock the Claydol out with my last use of Hidden Power Rock. 
things honestly could not have been timed better. At first I thought that this was a miracle because I've defeated it. He sends in Metagross next, which I can knock out. However, then the Skarmory comes back in because yes, by the way, he did switch. Very strange. I don't see that interaction very often, but okay. The only way for me to attack now is to get to struggle and then knock out the remainder of his Pokemon with this move. Remember, that did happen earlier on this year, so I decided to play this fight out, but the situation is not identical because in Agron's case, once I defeat the Skarmory, Cradley comes out and it can deal decent damage with moves like Giga Drain. So disappointingly, after a very long battle, Agron gets another reset. I tried one more time to get through the Claydol without depleting hidden power, but it doesn't work, so I reset before the fight gets too long. Maybe the move reminder can help me once again. This time I teach Double Edge in the place of Hidden Power Rock so that I can knock the clay doll out more quickly. This normal type move can do more than half, so I am able to knock it out and move on to the Metagross. From there I use Rest, it takes me down to low health. I make a misjudgment here, thinking that I would survive its next hit, but I don't, so that's a reset. I come back into the fight, get confused by the Armaldo, and it finishes me off. I didn't think the Earthquake was the right complement move for Double Edge since Skarmory is coming up, and knocking that thing out with a normal type move doesn't sound fun. So I teach Hidden Power Rock again, but this leaves me with little answer against Steven's Agron. An alternative to Hidden Power Rock would be the Iron Tail. This does solve the Agron, but it really doesn't solve the Metagross. As a result, I get trapped in a healing loop with Rest. That doesn't work out, and I lose. Okay, what about Iron Tail and Earthquake? If you think right now that I'm trying way too many combinations without leveling up, yeah, you're probably right. What I really didn't want to have to do is grind at level 78 with this slow growth rate Pokemon. That is going to take a very long time. Eventually Steven's Zagron got a critical hit and knocked mine out, so I thought that this moveset wasn't working out. I went and leveled and then came back to the fight at level 81, because I decided that I just needed to get lucky against the Agron. If it doesn't crit me, I should be fine. So the question is, will it? In this case it paralyzes right away with Thunder. That's a bit annoying. I use another Iron Tail, taking it down to red health. When Steven uses his full restore, I use Rest to heal. Note here in this battle I have the Leftovers now. This is by far the better item to be using. The Shell Bell only recovers damage damage whenever you deal damage, whereas the Leftovers recovers damage every single turn. Also when my defense stat is sky high and the opponent's Pokemon are mostly physical attackers, this item puts in a lot of work throughout the entire playthrough. I finish the Agron off, move on to the Metagross, use Earthquake doing more than half, it hits with Psychic, I recover a little bit of health with the Leftovers, and take it out. I have made it to his final Pokemon, the Cradily, and in this case with Iron Tail, I have super effective damage. I go for it, and Agron secures the one hit. Steven Stone, at long last, has been defeated. Agron clocks in with a first playthrough time of 3 hours, 17 minutes, and 42 seconds, with 47 resets at level 81. This is a game time of 9 hours and 46 minutes. It's time to do a little bit of a post-mortem on that run. Normally when I'm thinking about this section of the video I call it the summary, but I think that post-mortem is a better word for it today. Just two days ago I ran Manectric, and its final time was 3 hours and 34 minutes and 54 seconds, so Agron was at least able to beat that time. That being said, it also had a slow growth rate, and Agron did get a very comparable time. It's slightly faster than another result that I got with the Steel type earlier on in my series, that was with Jirachi. I think it could really improve that mythical Pokemon's time, but maybe not that much. Agron has slower times than Pokemon like Sableye, Tropius, Shiftry, Ludicolo, Sceptile, basically all the Grass types, which does not mean good things in Hoenn. The Grass type has been, so far, one of the worst types. In this case though, I think that the Steel, Rock, and perhaps Electric types might be giving it a run for its money as one of the worst types. With the performance that Metacham put out yesterday, the fighting type is definitely one of the best types in this game, that is definitely undeniable now. With a real time under 3 hours and 30 minutes, Agron earns itself a spot in the F tier, just behind Sableye, and just ahead of Jirachi. If we rank based on the game time metric, sometimes Pokemon in their initial playthrough will get much better game time rankings than real time rankings. That is usually the case when I have played particularly badly with a Pokemon. An example of that would be a Pokemon like Hariyama, where I didn't play particularly well with it, but I got a really good game time. Also, it got a really good real time. Hariyama is just sort of a beast. For Agron, unfortunately, this metric does not help it out that much. It is once again just faster than Jirachi, but it is slower than Swampert, so it earns itself a spot near the end of the E tier. So that's it for these three Emerald videos. Tomorrow we are going back to Pokemon Yellow. I hope you are excited for that. And then as we rotate through the games, next week we will once again be back in Pokemon Emerald, 
this time to test out Pokemon like Vigoroth and Slacking. I really hope to see you in those videos. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, thank you so much. It means the world to me. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you are incredible. I'll see you in my next one.